clean lines, plenty of concrete, and monumental boldness. The architectural style known as brutalism polarizes like no other. Some see the heavyweight buildings as oppressive. Others say they are daring ventures in architecture that deserve to be seen and protected. Brutalist architecture for me is such an exciting, bold and ambitious project. It's really also squeezed into a very few years in the 20th century, but in those years we managed to build some of the most fantastic and bold and adventurous buildings that the country's ever seen. Conservator Henrietta Billings has put her fascination with brutalism to paper. She's created a map of 50 buildings in this style around London. One of her favorites can be found in West London, the 98-meter-high Trellick Tower. It was designed as social housing by the British-Hungarian architect Ernu Goldfinger and completed in 1972. Back then, it was the UK's tallest residential high-rise and nicknamed the Tower of Terror because of the area's high crime rate. But these days, it's a popular residential area, and the iconic building is even available as a souvenir. Pellick Tower is a real landmark of London, not only because of its absolutely monumental architecture, its really striking silhouette, but it's also really recognisable from anywhere. Um, and it's probably one of the reasons why it's been so successful in terms of merchandising. Back to the centre. The capital's biggest ensemble of brutalist architecture is located in the city, London's financial district. Here we find the Barbican, designed by the British architecture firm Chamberlain, Powell and Bond. When it was opened in 1982, Queen Elizabeth II described it as a modern wonder of the world. Visitors can learn about its unique concept in guided tours. Using this amount of concrete is, um, would be impossible today. It would just be far too energy intensive and far too expensive. But not only that, it's the technique with which they used to create this surface and it's using a drill. Um, essentially workmen drilling this surface to create this really uneven texture. The Barbican includes a performing arts centre, an art gallery and residential complexes. Architect Melanie Schubert has renovated some 2,000 of the flats for clients. She's lived in one of them herself for a while and knows that many of her former neighbours are fans of brutalism. Brutalism, well, I really like it, but I think if you come with no prior knowledge of brutalism or the Barbican or modern architecture, I think it's, it's a bit difficult. Intermittent green areas form oases in the urban desert. The three residential towers reaching 123 meters high number among London's tallest buildings. Also unique are the high walks reserved for pedestrians while road traffic passes beneath. Henrietta Billings also appreciates the Barbican's shifting perspectives and simplicity. We're just looking at a staircase here into one of the blocks, but it's just three simple materials, concrete, steel and glass. What I love about it is just the simplicity of it. And through that simplicity, you get designs like this. And, and through the glass, you see the concrete stairs. And again, you see the steel banisters. So even through the glass, you see the same repetition of materials. I love it. On the south bank of the Thames, between Westminster Palace and Tower Bridge, stands London's most prominent brutalist structure, the Royal National Theatre, designed by English architect Sir Dennis Lasden and completed in 1976. Prince Charles once compared it to a nuclear power plant. The complex was renovated for some 100 million euros. And while the theatre is protected, other brutalist structures are in danger of demolition. What we need to be careful of is demolishing those buildings because we think that they have less value, because we think that they're modern and they don't need protecting. But actually, it's exactly why we do need to make sure that the best examples are protected. Brutalism, an architectural style that divides opinion, which is definitely worth seeing.